Hi everyone and welcome back to Butchery 101. I'm Christina Glenoga and today we're talking about the pig shoulder. This is part of a series about my breaking down a whole pig in my apartment. Check out the original video here and the head cheese video here. Also, don't forget to subscribe because we're going to be doing a lot of videos on pork in the next coming weeks and you're not going to want to miss a single bit of it. The whole pig video has a little bit more about breaking it away from the carcass, um, so check that out if you want to know about how you break this quarter off of there. Um, and I've actually already done videos on both the Boston butt and the picnic ham separately, which if you're interested in seeing those, check them out here. That was a really cool case because that was a much larger pig that we were working on at the time, and so um, the difference in how you break down a pig uh, depending on how large it is or small it is, is pretty darn cool to see. So yeah, check them out here. This is one of my favorite methods to break down a pork shoulder because it minimizes my saw use, which is very much a personal preference, but also nice if you just don't happen to have a saw. I'm using my knife to split the meat away from the rib cage, spine, and feather bones. You could use a saw on this part, but you would have to saw exactly down the middle of the spine to create two identical halves, and um, that is quite challenging, but is, it is definitely possible. It might also be even easier if you happen to have like a sawzall on hand. Something y'all should know about all quadrupeds that walk on all fours is that they have floating shoulders. That means the bones of their front legs, including the shoulder blade, aren't attached to the rest of their bone structure at all, except by muscle. So this cut that you're seeing now won't involve cutting through any joints. that's where the sternum used to be. I'm keeping my knife in contact with the bones the whole time, always using feel to guide my cuts. And yes, this footage does seem repetitive and I left it all in here to demonstrate how shallow my cuts are. It'll take many strokes to do this particular work and that yields a smooth, intact surface for the meat afterwards. There are a few moments here where you can see that in addition to cutting, I'm grabbing the meat and pushing slash pulling the parts away from each other. That opens up the carcass efficiently, allowing me to get to the next cut, but I don't do it hard enough to damage the meat. Although, honestly, it would take a lot to damage the meat that way, um, so feel free to do it and uh, don't be afraid to be a little bit rough with the meat. It definitely speeds up the process a lot. Once you start to see that line of back fat, you know you're close to the end. Shoulder is one of my very, very favorite cuts and I'm so excited to be sharing this with y'all because the fact is that these muscles all have a ton of flavor and I really wish more people would cook with them. Um, and so I'm really excited that we're here to keep talking about it. So here we're going to split the quarter into two subprimals, which are the Boston butt and the picnic ham. And oh my gosh, it's so crazy to see how small this is. Um, most of the time you'll see Boston butts in the grocery store or your butcher shop and they will be two or three times larger than this. So the way you choose where to split it is that you look at the copa here at the top and choose a spot um, a little bit to the left, depending on how large you want your Boston butt to be. And then we go to the other side and make another little notch in the loin side. Again, choosing the distance between the loin, uh, choosing a certain distance from the loin. And then you just have to connect the dots on the other side. I'm utilizing a razor blade here because the skin on this guy is actually really tough. Um, and I'm pretty stoked on it because that's going to be really delicious later. But it's really rough on your knife and I'm much more comfortable using a razor blade at uh, the short distance to make that cut. Yeah. 
Now that we have the meat and the skin cut away, it's time to bust out the saw to saw through the shoulder blade. And here I, I'm utilizing a meat hook because it'll hold the meat steady in a way that doesn't let the saw just push it all around over my table. And now the Boston butt is good to go. Hey team, popping in really quick to talk about the other super cool stuff Butchery 101 has to offer. The first are our rewards on Patreon. The tiers range from basic, which help keep all the lights on and me away from white supremacist and or otherwise gross billionaire money, all the way up to sponsoring an entire YouTube video every month. I'm especially excited about the meat nerd level where you get a monthly one-on-one -on -one video chat where we discuss all your own meaty pursuits. Patreon memberships are great for people who want a bit more meat education in their lives while also dismantling the patriarchy. It's also a really good spot for partnerships, so check it out if you're interested. Butchery 101 also offers online butchery classes and holiday consultations. It's great for folks who want to step up their small animal at home butchery game. We also accept one-time donations via GoFundMe, which make a great gift if you want to donate in someone's name. My Patreon, Talk, and GoFundMe pages are all linked in the description below, and I super look forward to seeing all y'all over there. And now, back to the show. I've done these in earlier episodes, but it's always good to remember that one, there will always be a little bit of, at least a little bit of synovial fluid that comes out of the joints. And so it's really important to be mindful of that liquid when it comes out. And then two, it's really important to utilize weight and gravity to get through all these super strong tendons that are in these parts. And the skin, again, here is extra tough, so that's why I'm utilizing the razor blade. Doing this part is honestly so bizarre to me because it's so small. This pig was only around 100 pounds or so and normally I'm used to working on stuff that's like 150 pounds if not 200 pounds and so it's just so interesting to see this difference in the cuts. Anyway, um, my original plan was to use this flat portion of the picnic ham for grind and sausage and like maybe a little charcuterie. Um, but. It's so thin that I think it would actually be really good as bacon. Also, this pig only had, I mean, not that large a belly, because again, it's not that large a pig, so I'm really excited to have two more slabs of bacon.
These bones here are super valuable. Oftentimes they're referred to as the neck bones. They have hella joints, which means they have hella connective tissue, and that means hella collagen, and that means hella gelatin in whatever you use them for. So you get a super satisfying mouthfeel that feels like thick and coating the inside of your mouth when you eat whatever dish you use these bones for, and you get the added benefit of this collagen and gelatin adding to your hair, skin, and nail health and also to your joint health. Which, if you happen to use a collagen supplement, these bones are your jam. This is a very freeform process at this point, but just keep in mind a couple things. One, the size of your cooking vessel. Um, all you wanna do is make sure that you can get any of these bones into your cooking vessel. For me, it's a, the large size Instant Pot, and so be, this is pretty easy. And then two, aim with your knife for the joint joints and cartilage points so you can just use your knife. I did actually try to use my little cleaver for Chinese style spare ribs but that was tough and so yeah um, this is probably a, the better move. <laughs> And now, I want to let y'all know what it is that I'm doing with all of these awesome pig parts. So the Boston butt is, well, one of my Boston butts is currently back sealed and frozen for later use, but the other one is dry aging currently, and as of record the recording time of this video, it's about five weeks into dry aging, and I'm super excited about it. If you want to check out more info on the dry aging process and um, the way that these dry aging projects are going, here's a link to the live streams that I do Tuesdays and Fridays when I check in on them. This is uh, what all happened with the picnic ham. Both of them I ended up roasting slow in an oven for about six hours at 300 degrees to get the meat all tender and the skin extra dry, um, which I had scored ahead of time. And then I've used two methods so far to crisp up the skin. And the one that you're seeing here is when we superheated some rice bran oil to about 500 degrees, like right at the smoke point, and then ladled it slowly over the skin to puff it up and make it extra crispy and delicious. I'm super stoked. That's maybe my favorite crisping method so far. I might. Let me know if you want to see a video on that specifically. Again, that picnic ham portion um, ended up being a little bit too small to make into sausage, but it made perfect bacon. And I'll be making a bacon video in the near future, so stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe. Two of the hawks that you see here ended up being gifts for a friend of mine and so I'm super excited to see what she does with them. And then the other two are still frozen in my freezer and I'm looking forward to a cold winter's day where we make like a really nice, you know, gelatinous stewy broth situation. Um, again, stay tuned and a lot of times I'll be posting this stuff to Instagram so make sure to follow there too. And finally, we have the trotters, both of which I cooked down with the head cheese stuff and it turned out beautiful. Most of that stuff is frozen in my freezer currently, um, but I did throw together a video last week on head cheese and so you can see what all happened with that there. Here's the link. Thanks again so much for watching. Don't forget to like and, like and subscribe. Thank you so much to the Patreons who helped make this happen. And I'll see y'all next week for another episode of Butchery 101. Thanks. Bye.